All right, good afternoon. I am Michael Tiemann. I am the project lead from OS Climate, and I'm also going to introduce our panelists today. I'm gonna to start with a little introduction. In the world of high tech, the question of the day is often, what is the next big thing? And then open source came along and the question became, what's the next big thing in open source? I don't need to tell you that climate change is a big thing and it's a big thing for people, for corporations and for people who invest in corporations. It's the kind of problem made for a globally scalable innovation solution such as open source. And this is what our panelists are gonna talk about today. On our panel, we have Truman Siemens, the CEO of the OS Climate Project. We have uh, Lisa Eichler, who is the co-head of climate and ESG for Ortec Finance. We have Adrian Cockroft, the VP of Cloud and Architecture Strategy for Amazon. Uh, and uh, myself, Michael Tiemann, I am a project lead for OS Climate and uh, uh, I also work as a VP of Open Source Affairs at Red Hat. And so let's, let's start off with Truman telling us some of the key trends in how the world addresses uh, uh, climate and how that's driving fintech uh, solutions. Great, thank you, Michael. And, and um, we appreciate the chance to be at this conference and um, thank you for participating in the panel. Um, so I'm looking at my window uh, at uh, Hurricane, the, the, the remains of Hurricane Etta. Uh, Michael and I are both in a state that is experiencing uh, record rainfalls. Uh, and and I, I, I rec depending on where, where you all reside, very likely uh, you've been impacted by one of the major events, fires, floods, uh, hurricanes, um, that uh, is, is that is really shaping um, and reshaping the planet. Um, you may also live in a place where the economic transition to a low carbon economy is having an impact, uh, whether that's by uh, changing the prices of, uh, prices and demand for fuels, etc. Um, so a couple of the things that are, are really happening that, um, that bring this down to uh, what's happening um, in open source and around fintech um, are uh, that um, uh, you know, essentially what these transitions are happening, but climate risk, whether it's transition risk, transition to a new economy or physical risk are not priced into markets. Uh, that's one of the reasons why um, climate change is at the top of the agenda for the incoming Biden administration. Um, uh, OS Climate took part in the development of the first ever um, the comprehensive guidance for all US financial regulators uh, released in September, calling for a mandatory price on carbon. And that's part of the Biden platform. Uh, likewise, in Europe, the, the main financial regulator is gonna be promulgating uh, new regulations coming out in March that call for the same thing. Um, so uh, what that means is that, um, and that's uh, there's also requirements coming down from all the central banks requiring stress testing requiring that financial institutions across the, uh, the globe in 50, uh, 50 countries, uh, uh, and this and it will really uh, ultimately spread to all countries, that financial institutions understand and report on um, the climate-related systemic risk in their portfolios. So uh, what does that mean? It means that essentially um, almost every large corporation and large financial services player that is participating in this conference has got to act um, that's the demand side, uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about uh, the supply side, the solution uh, later on in the talk. All right, thank you, thank you for setting the stage. Uh, let's uh, let's understand what is um, uh, what is the OS Climate Platform, and what's the vision. So. Um, Today, um, where we stand and sit, um, there uh, is a gap of literally 1.2, at least $1.2 trillion a year um, in an unmet uh, finance and investment that would be required uh, to meet the goals of the Paris Climate Accords um, and, um, and therefore to avoid really catastrophic disruption of, uh, of the economy, society, and the environment. Um, there are um, uh, uh, large investors, institutional investors, 
um, uh, with 40 trillion under assets who have said, we're gonna respond, but they haven't yet because, except really around the margins, because uh, they lack the necessary data and tools um, and analytic tools to integrate climate related risk and opportunity into a whole range of investment decisions. The same is true in corporations. And so uh, OS Climate uh, has a vision of uh, developing um, the, a, a data commons um, and, and the required data um, uh, quality, trusted, comparable data about corporations, about markets, about the physical world, um, combined with uh, a platform of uh, open analytic tools um, that is able to run a whole range of, uh, of scenario-based analysis, um, drawing from science, but applying these to concrete decisions in the capital markets. So Lisa Eichler, um, based on your experience with institutional investors and financial institutions, what do they need uh, in an open source platform like this? Yes, um, thank you, Michael. So maybe just to, to give the audience a bit of a view of, um, yeah, what our experience there has been. So Ortec Finance, we're really kind of a fintech uh, specialized in, in modeling um, and, and building technology for the financial sector. So for these institutional investors, including insurance, big and large insurance companies, pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, and so on. And traditionally, they have been using this to these these financial decision making tools without uh, the climate angle in it. But about uh, three, four years ago, there was really this this upkick and trend in in uh, yeah, investors wanting to find out how can they integrate climate risk um, and, and broader also climate alignment thinking into these uh, into these tools. And um, yeah, that's what uh, we have uh, focused on. Um, and we really see that uh, um, inv investors really struggle with this same common question on figuring out the available standards, but also um, the available data and tooling around, uh, around the topic of, of, of climate change. And we also see that at the same time, our collaborators uh, in this field in terms of you know, service providers, data providers, scientists, but also uh, competitors, uh, the same. All We're all racing <laughs> as fast as possible uh, to work on filling these current gaps. But uh, what we feel very strongly about um, uh, as Ortec Finance is, is that you know, to get these basics in place, it could very much be accelerated if, if everyone worked uh, together towards that, that one a common goal. So joining forces in terms of uh, the hours invested, the, the, the innovation budgets spent, we, because in the end, we're trying to, like you already said in the introduction, we're trying to tackle one common challenge uh, that the world is facing. And we only have about 10 years left to act um, to, to give uh, you know, the future world a chance um, uh, and succeed in, in the transition to a low carbon economy. So um, for that, to, to build this common base layer and, and really have um, a, a unified platform that can provide open data, open tools, uh, so that uh, all the analytics around climate change can become more comparable, consistent, and transparent. I think that's really a common trend that we uh, see in, um, from the investor's perspective. Truman, did I see you wanted to add something to that? Um, well, I, I could, but uh, but perhaps um, this is a good point uh, for Lisa to talk uh, about um, the the net zero. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll do this, and Lisa, I'll, I'll kind of tee you up here. So um, the initial members uh, of uh, of OS Climate um, under the Linux Foundation are uh, Allianz, um, which uh, combined with its um, its investment management subsidiaries uh, manages. Um, several trillion dollars in assets, um, not just the insurance company, uh, but also a major, major asset manager, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and S&P Global, one of the leading uh, uh, market data and analytics providers. Um, uh, one of the reasons why uh, Allianz uh, is involved and, um, uh, and they are a longtime client, by the way, of Ortec Finance, um, is because uh, of a thing called the Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance. So I referred uh, to some of these major commitments um, that, are, that are drawing um, a demand for better data and analytics. And, and Lisa, why don't you say just a word about the Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance? 
Yeah, I think uh, the Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance, just uh, like uh, actually various other initiatives that are kind of investor driven initiatives, they're really looking for, um, yeah, like what I what I said, a kind of a unified um, approach, right? And and they would like to accelerate uh, the, the building of, of more openly available data sets as well as, as tools for analytics um, and, and together. So, so not uh, choosing uh, across uh, different uh, types of, uh, of uh, commercial data sets necessarily, but really finding um, thing, uh, a solution that is comparable and, and very transparent. And uh, they are really involved in driving, um, yeah, this uh, also the OS, uh, OS Climate Initiative and uh, yeah, supporting where, where they can. I'm just going to mention. So um, th these are these are not small institutions. Um, uh, Aviva, AXA, uh, Calpers, one of the largest uh, 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 asset owners in the U.S., Caisse de in um, in uh, in France, uh, CDBQ. Um, uh, let's see, Generali, Munich Re, Swiss Re, Nordea. So uh, so um, uh, Zurich. So some of the very largest financial institutions on the planet. And not only have they committed to net zero um, emissions in their investment portfolios by 2050, but they've, they've, act, they've each also made commitments uh, by 2025 for very substantial reductions, but they don't know how to get there. They're taking a major risk and there's a, there's a need for speed. So that's one of the reasons why they're turning to open source uh, to, to meet those needs. Yeah, that's absolutely a great point. Figuring out how to navigate the financial movements to get there is really a super big challenge. And one of the things that the OS Climate Platform is being um, positioned to answer. And I've actually been leading the alpha prototype efforts uh, uh, among some of the initial OS Climate members. Um, but first, uh, Lisa and Adrian, uh, could you say a few words about the work that uh, has been done and is underway so far? Lisa, why don't you talk a little bit about the SBTI tool? Yeah, so um, as uh, OSC, we, we were tasked um, uh, to build actually the, the Science-Based Targets Initiative. is a large initiative, once again, many investors, many stakeholders involved. And um, they have uh, developed a, a very credible methodology for measuring actually temperature um, scoring and portfolio alignment to a transition to uh, um, any kind of carbon reduction targets, right? And they were looking for um, somebody to build an open source tool that can be the calculation engine, so to say, um, to, yeah, to put this methodology into practice so that investors as well as companies can start measuring their, their temperature score and portfolio coverage. And uh, so over the last few months, um, we have been hard at work building uh, this uh, open source Python uh, code, uh, which is really aimed to be able to integrate it in any commercial or homegrown decision support uh, tooling or, or also run as a standalone version. And it has been launched uh, early October as an open source tool, like we, we've been mentioning. And uh, currently we're now working on further building on top of that uh, with the OS uh, climate uh, community and um, yeah, further expanding its functionality over time. Adrian? Yeah, sure. Um, so AWS has been supporting open data for a long time. We've had that program for many years. And in 2018, we announced the Amazon Sustainability Data Initiative. Since then, it's grown to about 20 petabytes of, of basically climate data, the data you need to build these kinds of tools. So that was our starting point. And what, we've, what we're doing now is we're taking, um, we're looking at the data we've got, we're looking at the additional data that's needed to support these tools and the, the entire program. Uh, we're adding new things to ASDI, new data sources. And with ASDI, it makes sure the data is clean. It's got uh, somebody who's going to keep it up to date. Um, and we host it for free uh, on AWS. So that's, that's kind of the bottom up approach. And then we're also working top down with Allianz, particularly to define how they want to use this. What are the different sort of flows? What are the different uh, user needs that we can, uh, and use cases that we want to build? And then in the middle, we've got, we're integrating things like SBTI 
and other contributed an an analytics packages that are doing things like physical risk. Uh, and that can drive investment in resilience to heat, coast and river flooding, drought, things like that. And we're pulling all this together with a, a data catalog interface. And the, the team that's doing this, we've contributed some AWS credits to OS Climate to run uh, this themselves, but also we've contributed a professional services team, uh, which has a, a great deal of experience in building data, data lakes, data warehousing. And so that team is basically kickstarting the, the open source contribution um, to get, get, it, get the thing initially in place. Thank you. Uh, in addition, uh, Allianz and Microsoft have been working on building some stress testing tools uh, for climate risk management uh, by insurance companies and banks. And we've been uh, looking at the work, for example, that the Bank of England has put out there on the Prudential 2019 insurance model, the BES 2021 model. And um, all of this is, is coming together in a context at the Linux Foundation, uh, which uh, obviously supports many other uh, cross-industry uh, open source collaborations, such as uh, FinOS, uh, uh, LFAI, LF Energy, Automotive Grade Linux, and other umbrella, umbrella projects um, uh, related to open, uh, um, open climate and ESG data. But uh, I'd like to ask, uh, Adrian, what, uh, what was it that really brought you and Amazon uh, into OS Climate? Um, well, I've been personally interested in sustainability for, for many years, and um, most recently I've been working on open source for, for AWS. So this is a kind of a natural bridge for me. Um, but what really happened a little over a year ago, uh, Jeff Bezos uh, made the climate pledge for Amazon as a whole, obviously including AWS, um, to meet the, the Paris Accord 10 years early and to move uh, Amazon itself, all of our uh, energy used to be renewable by 2025. And what that really did internally, I mean, we were already investing in sustainability in several areas, but it really stepped up the level of investment. So internally, we've been working through, you know, what does it mean to have this as a priority to, um, for Amazon to take a leadership position on climate rather than sort of working through, you know, what we needed to, to just keep, to, to sort of be in the middle of the pack. Um, so that's, that's what's really changed. We're also seeing a growing demand for companies to make sustainability a focus and disclose their climate related risk. As I mentioned, we had the Amazon Sustainability Data Initiative since 2018 and creating and hosting a data commons and open source analytics on top of that, you know, open source data is freely supported um, data is an obvious next step. And uh, it's just, uh, we've, like I said, we've contributed credits and a team and we're sort of well underway now in, in figuring out what it takes to put all these pieces together. One of, the, uh, uh, one of the great things about open source is the way that it enables uh, companies that are normally fierce competitors to find new grounds on which to collaborate. And with Amazon and Microsoft, both a part of the, uh, of the OS Climate Project, I'd, I'd like to get your perspective on uh, you know, how, is it, how is it working uh, for Amazon and Microsoft to be uh, playing in this sandbox together? I think it's really the same as we have with open source. There's plenty of projects where uh, uh, AWS and Microsoft cooperate to, to build open source projects together. So, th so it's, um, it's really that the, the outcome here is a common goal, it's a common good. Anything that we do helps the world, anything that Microsoft do helps the world. And it applies in the same way. So it's sort of a positive sum game, if you like. And the more people we can get involved in OS climate, the better. What we're really seeing, though, is that the current climate modeling marketplace is fractured. We need to move to an open source data and analytics model. We can take out this undifferentiated heavy listing that everyone's doing over and over again, standardize the data commons, and create a larger, more unified marketplace for climate impact modeling. And that, that's really the goal here. And then really the, the leading analytics today are based, you know, the capabilities we have are based on open source tooling and common standards. 
and you know, AWS has services to make those easy to use, but it also gives customers the option to run those tools, uh, it, those, their, own, their own implementations elsewhere. So we're assembling the con contributions on GitHub. Um, we're extending ASJ to include these additional data sources. And we see a few different ways that people are going to be using this. The, the, the idea here is to have a multi-tenant service operated by OS Climate that you can go to um, to explore the data for free, up to obviously some limits, but so but basically for people to explore it and figure out what's there. And then we expect a commercial analytics marketplace to emerge for enhanced data and analytics on top of that. That's that's the prime, that's that's where we'll start. The second thing, large organizations are going to want to run their own private copy of this, but since it's potentially petabytes of data, um, the, the sort of easiest thing to do is to just take the open source um, setup, run it in their own AWS account against ASDI data sources. And that's a low cost way that they can have their own version of this whole thing and build their own analytics on top of that. Then the third approach is, the, is to have a private copy of the data in the code running in a data center or on another cloud provider. And you know, this, obviously the configuration um, tooling around that will be slightly different, but that we expect to have contributed into the project as well. So the core analytics will all be purely open source and based on open source toolkits and will be basically cloud neutral and agnostic. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I noticed that uh, we have not gotten a lot of questions in the chat, which may mean that we are so engaging that you can't get to your keyboard. But if you do have questions you want answered later down the road, feel free to push them into the chat channel or the Slack channels and, and we'll get back to you. But um, in the meantime, there are a lot of climate data and analytics initiatives happening. And so I'd like to ask Truman to talk a little bit about what is it that differentiates OS Climate? What are the other important open source efforts that our, our audience should know about? Um, so, um, you know, actually I wanna uh, ask Michael if you might yourself tackle the, one of the key first pieces of this. So there, um, I'll talk about some of the other open source initiatives, um, but, um, uh, there are a number of initiatives out there that um, that are open this, open that, that um, that say uh, we have um, made our uh, our product and code open source, uh, but they're not. So, do you want to comment on that? <laughs> sure. So, as 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 many of you may know from my bio, I've been doing open source legitimately since before <laughs> open source existed as a term. Uh, starting that world's first company back in 1989. But during that long history, there are people who have observed that uh, using the word open has magical marketing properties. And the open source initiative as an organization has done its best to make open source licensing really mean something. The Linux Foundation has done a phenomenal job of basically being an honest broker who can bring a number of competing companies together and to work successfully uh, at collaborative development and industry uh, industry wide initiatives. Now, at the same time, there continue to be uh, companies and investors who are looking for how to bring that open magic sauce uh, to their uh, uh, to their play without necessarily contributing back or allowing for the kind of creative competition that true open source and open data allow. But this is something which um, the, uh, the real open source community knows how to do. And we're doing it within the umbrella of the Linux Foundation. Great, thanks. So let me, um, uh, there are a number of, of different initiatives and companies we wanted to make sure the audience was aware of. This is not comprehensive, but um, you know, hopefully it will point you in some other directions and you know, in, uh, maybe in the networking room uh, after the session's over, we can point you to others. Uh, so there are a lot of initiatives and, 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 uh, um, that are focused on um, uh, more efficient, trustworthy carbon markets, um, which are gonna be crucial for uh, addressing the, uh, the 
the low carbon transition in an economically efficient way. Um, and, then there, and then there are others that are focused on specific asset classes. So the Open Climate Foundation is one uh, that's an example of, uh, of, of work around uh, carbon markets. And, and by the way, they're, they're tied in uh, with, um, with Hyperledger uh, it, within the Linux, uh, the Linux Foundation family. Um, one that's working on particular asset classes that we're excited about is called Capital for Climate. And that is uh, really much more about um, uh, as uh, uh, large financial institutions, institutional investors um, come to understand how they need to reallocate, uh, uh, strategically reallocate their portfolios. This is about deploying capital, particularly into um, next generation technologies, private equity, venture stage firms. Um, so um, there are also some really uh, very important um, open source initiatives and open data initiatives around physical risk. Um, uh, one that is um, sort of a, a bridge and servicing uh, the, the insurance community, uh, but also um, all of those, all of us, because we're all insured in multiple different ways, is called Oasis. Um, they're exceptional. There are some great um, uh, efforts underway uh, to, and we'll talk a little bit more in a, few, in a, in a minute or two, about um, uh, addressing the impacts of climate change on the, the, the natural world, um, biodiversity and, and, the, and the natural world that we depend on. There's some great things going on uh, in that, on that front in Brazil. Uh, so one is called Map uh, Biomash and, um, and then Politica uh, Por uh, backed uh, Those are backed by the way, by Itaú, which is the largest commercial bank in all of Latin America. Um, and, uh, and that will be um, uh, implemented um, across uh, their, the, the various banking platforms years ahead. Um, so uh, also a really uh, interesting area that I think touches uh, uh, a lot of areas of, of, of fintech and open source is around asset level data. So alternative information on what companies are really doing when it comes to energy, emissions, water, um, uh, and that um, and that involves, for example, the use of, of AI, also um, spatial data, uh, and there's some great organizations working on that, including GeoAsset uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, part of Oxford, uh, or related to Oxford, um, uh, uh, and ADEM, which is a, um, a, a major quasi-governmental think tank in France. Um, maybe, uh, uh, Lisa, do you have any thoughts there? Yeah, so uh, maybe just to, to add to those uh, broader initiatives that Truman mentioned, also also to say that there are also various kind of, um, you know, very interesting and ambitious startups such as um, uh, Rights Based on Science, uh, who uh, open source at least uh, big, uh, large parts of um, uh, their, yeah, their, their initiatives, their, their data or, or analytics uh, tooling. And in addition to that, I also would like to mention uh, that, uh, you know, of course, uh, the, the large universities, um, the very established climate science modelers, uh, you know, these, these data sets are also open source and, um, yeah, certainly something that um, encourages collaboration also with, with OSC and, and feeding, feeding from, from the, the academic um, open source uh, available um, data sources as well. Yeah, Adrian, you might have some some thoughts on that as well, given your work in sustainability over the years. Yeah, and I've also spent a lot of time working with um, uh, finance companies of various types around the world. And I think the, the trend um, that I'm seeing is a uh, the need for speed. They're seeing business agility as a survival characteristic. And I think we're, we'll see that move from you know, basically the organizations that have figured out how to build products quickly and adopt new technologies quickly that have got into open source and um, you know, DevOps and uh, all of the kind of you know, containers, AI, machine learning. The people that have figured out how to adopt those technologies are also the organizations that I think are going to figure out how to, they're going to be in the vanguard of thinking about sustainability and climate mitigation practices. And I think that the organizations that get left behind are the ones which are at, at risk from a commercial point of view. And what we'll start to see is that if you're falling behind here, you're actually going to start uh, getting your value marked down as an asset risk. So I think that that's um, driving people 
in, in everyone in the right direction. But I think that certainly the winning, the leading companies are the ones that have already figured out how to be more agile and how to respond more quickly. That's awesome. I want to I want to just notice right now how much of a there there already is there. When I started promoting this idea of commercial support for free software, it was almost impossible to get people excited about it only because it was so new and there were so few other people doing it, uh, let alone consuming it. And we've heard about all these banks, we've heard about how many uh, startups and how many governmental organizations and policies are all converging on this common topic. And so the opportunity to join in and start addressing the climate change world within the financial services community is just awesome. But it gets even better uh, because there are open data and uh, open uh, fintech uh, solutions being developed that go beyond uh, just, uh, just the climate. And so Lisa, can you talk a little bit about uh, uh, the world of ESG? Yeah, sure. I mean, of course, indeed, uh, there is the broader world of, of ESG and, uh, you know, sustainability in indicators. So I would say, um, yeah, climate is maybe the, the most concrete and the most uh, you know, data rich uh, topic to start with. But I would say, by no means is that uh, the, the uh, only uh, one to, to focus on. So broader, we also see huge needs in the market for, for more unified and um, more transparent open um, data on, on broader ESG. But I would say also um, what, what uh, our team is also really looking into is actually expanding from climate to all the planetary boundaries eventually. And uh, I mean, including, uh, for example, um, you know, what, what Truman was mentioning, biodiversity, and um, maybe also, you know, connecting uh, the dots. Uh, so, so working on the just, just transition so that connects the E and the S um, uh, to me in the ESG. So uh, also making sure that uh, there's social inclusion in, in, in the transition uh, towards a low carbon climate resilient economy. So, um... Well, I want to say a little bit more uh, about uh, the, the biodiversity side. So uh, th this is, um, uh, so it, 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 when you talk about sort of next big thing uh, in, in terms of sort of what's happening in the climate world, um, it, so that it is, it's very, very much um, increasingly focused on uh, not just mitigating greenhouse gases and, um, but on uh, addressing the catastrophic loss and, and, and threat of even accelerated uh, losses of biodiversity um, and the habitat that biodiversity depends on. Um, this is going to be a, a very big thing that affects um, a whole range of industries and markets and certainly around fintech. Uh, so um, it is, um, it is the, the top item on the sort of environment um, agenda uh, for um, the uh, European Union um, or, or we sort of climate and biodiversity. And, um, and that's going to even increase um, and appear in a whole range of different regulations that are going to create need for additional fintech, regtech, et cetera. Um, because the, the, the French are about to take over the presidency of the European Union, and it is their top priority. Uh, fortunately, um, uh, the, the senior advisor to the French government on these issues is also on our advisory board, so we expect to be closely involved there. That's Monique Barbu. Fantastic, fantastic. So, you know, as, as, if, as if just the financial climate informed investment opportunity wasn't big enough. Uh, the social uh, dimension, the governance dimension, the biodiversity dimension, there's a lot to it. But as Truman said, this really is all about science coming together to be able to help us better understand our financial decisions, uh, our, our, our priorities. And that is why it is so important for us to have a framework that can become a unified framework. And so that is- I wanted go to go, Michael, to a question that, that came in um, earlier, because I think actually this is a good point to address it, and that is sort of uh, how, uh, how does, uh, does what we're talking about here connect to other areas of fintech? And um, so I'll give you one example that is, is just hugely exciting and important. Um, so mobile payments 
um, is, uh, you know, is obviously an, a massive area of work and where there's just been, uh, you know, tremendous um, leapfrogging of traditional banking models to be able to address um, uh, bottom of the pyramid, uh, to be able to handle um, financial transactions in remote areas all over the world. Uh, and, um, and a lot of that has been driven and, 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 and enabled by improvements um, in, in infrastructure and networking, et cetera, including through um, projects of uh, LF networking and others. Um, so what does that have to do with what we're talking about here? Um, so it is crucially important to be able to have actually micropayments um, that, that flow down to rural farmers um, in Africa, to, uh, to people that are uh, using uh, low carbon, um, high efficiency uh, cook stoves uh, as an alternative to, you know, basically cooking and heating with, with dung for fuel. Um, those are all things that um, we're through um, uh, through mobile telephony and micropayments uh, working through the, the, uh, through the telecom system um, are able to engage and involve those people um, in a way that you know, not only uh, when you add it up across the billions of people that, um, that are the users of, of energy, tillers of soil, et cetera, um, not only are, uh, are, are changes and motivating those changes um, important for addressing climate change, but also for a just transition. Yeah, that's great. And so um, I think another another question, which is uh, on a lot of people's mind, is uh, how can they themselves get involved? How can individuals, not just organizations, get involved? And um, Adrian, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we've had, I'd say, in the open source arena, it's a mixture of uh, corporate contributions and individuals who get excited about uh, a particular area. Um, one of the th ways that we've seen uh, that works pretty well to get people excited is to organize, um, actually have an organized hackathon. And that way you, you have sort of the core support people in place that know how the system is currently built, can see, have some sort of concentrated support and just invite people in and have everybody just working on different aspects of, of the system. So. Um, we have, we've been organizing hackathons around projects uh, for a long time, all different kinds of things. And so I think that's something that we're, we're looking to do as, as this um, gets to a point where there's a publicly available copy of the code. Um, uh, we're, we're looking to try to organize various types of uh, events around it to sort of promote it and gather people, get, get people to, to um, make contributions and figure out how to use the data themselves. Hackathons can be an amazing catalyst. Uh, another suggestion, uh, Lisa Eichler posted a link to the Science-Based Targets Initiative tool, which is just, you know, it's just one piece of this massive, massive puzzle. And I don't recommend trying to consume all knowledge about global climate change and uh, climate aware investing in one go. But if you wanted to start somewhere and just sort of look at how a particular piece reaches uh, into some of the topics, that would be a good way to also uh, get involved. So we are in the process of uh, building some prototypes. Uh, we are not quite yet ready to release that code because uh, we want it to be something that uh, uh, people can sort of latch onto and study and we're still, we're still really at the, at the beginning. But as we uh, make announcements about the uh, prototype availability, we hope that the awareness that we are building through activities like this forum are going to uh, cue people to look at that work, make comments, criticize, possibly join. That's what that's really what the open source uh, community is all about. So um, I want to know if um, uh, let's see. I'd like we we just have a few minutes left, and so I'd like to go back to uh, Truman Siemens and just to give us a, a recap of the near-term vision of OS Climate. Um, great, so uh, thank you. And uh, again, we're very um, pleased to have the opportunity to have, um, have spoken with you all today. Um, we are very eager for you to uh, get involved in the work that we're doing, um, uh, whether um, through 
um, membership in NOS climate and contributions on a corporate level um, or as individual contributors. And, uh, uh, and um, as, as we've said, we will uh, certainly push out through the community opportunities um, for individual developers uh, to, to do that. We hope to get uh, to that point um, soon. So um, I, I think what we, we've sort of mentioned in, in bits and pieces here, uh, some um, some elements of uh, our vision for the data commons and for analytics. Um, so uh, just to, to kind of put that, um, to, to wrap that together, we're focused in the in the near term on uh, on the the uh, greatest needs, the the most uh, pressing needs uh, of uh, large uh, sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, uh, asset managers, and banks for um, understanding and quantifying climate related risk, uh, understanding um, and actively investing in. Uh, opportunities for climate solutions that are also um, have uh, the risk return profile that is required or providing uh, um, sort of having better credit decisions for what they finance. Um, uh, and uh, and for uh, at, a, at, a, at a more of a financial system level to provide the tools uh, that are needed to understand climate related risk across the financial system. Uh, so um, it, that's the envelope um, for the uh, the elements and pieces that you've heard uh, described here today um, around uh, tools for stress testing, around uh, the science-based targets um, financial initiative tool, uh, tools for um, uh, assessing uh, portfolios of real assets um, uh, and, and other types of portfolios. Uh, for physical risk uh, and resilience and adaptation and, and, and investments in resilience. Um, and then very, very importantly, um, accelerating toward uh, the availability of high quality, uh, comparable uh, data about markets and corporations um, uh, uh, that, um, uh, that is, um, uh, that is, you know, robust enough to essentially to, uh, to to serve all of these investment needs. Um, we've, we're taking uh, small steps uh, now toward that. Maybe Adrian, you can talk about just some of the immediate um, steps that are underway. Um, so we're we're currently working a way to to get this put together. Um, the first version, uh, we've, we've got some internal prototypes that we'll be sharing amongst the OS climate membership as we as we go forward. We're starting to assemble the pieces, um, some of the contributions. We we're expecting to have, um, have something in, in the next few months that actually uh, starts to become usable and then have a public release sometime during 2021. So that's the schedule we're on. And I think just going back to the what can you do thing. I think everybody that works for a public company, you should know what your public company's position is on disclosing um, your targets. And if you don't know what that is, or if your company doesn't have a position, maybe that you can go and ask the question. Like, what, what are we doing if uh, climate reporting, climate impact reporting becomes mandatory for all public companies around the world? Like, what is our position on that? And I think that's a good question. And you'll, you may find that somebody's working on it and you can develop that relationship and then um, you know, maybe point them at OS Climate as a, as a way to help build um, that reporting information. Adrian, I think that's such an excellent uh, closing argument, that idea of answering the question, what can I do? Perhaps the reason that climate change has become such a large problem is that individuals think about that question and they can't imagine that practically there is anything that they can do. And yet, and yet this open source development model, this marketplace of companies who desperately need breakthrough technologies to be able to make correct decisions, set the stage for that individual contributor to work with the many, many other individual contributors who have the same question, who have an answer, a piece of the answer to this question. And so um, time is short, but time is now for those who have that question, what can I do to find an answer and within their companies, bring their companies to the table at, uh, uh, as part of the Linux 
uh, Foundation's Climate Finance uh, Group. Uh, for those of you who are true individual contributors, um, check in with the OS Climate Project and see uh, when we are ready to, uh, to engage the open source community more fully. Terrific. And so, and so uh, go, go ahead. Uh, well, I, well, we're, we're at time, but Truman, if you want to have the last word, since it's your <laughs> your project, go right ahead. No, that was a perfect closer. Go, go ahead. Um, okay. Well, we really, really appreciate your uh, time and attention. I see that there's a couple of late, late uh, breaking uh, uh, comments in the chat, but we can continue this conversation uh, on the Slack channel. We can continue this conversation uh, out there in the real world. And so thank you so much for giving us your attention and we hope to see you uh, somewhere in the, in the, uh, in the code space uh, sometime soon. Thank you. And thank you, Lisa. Truman, Adrian, you've been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Thank everyone. You.